Well, hello all attendees. Good afternoon or good morning for some of you. Welcome to this month's App in a Day Alumni Community Webcast. Eric, are you ready to roll? Sure am. Thanks very much, Bill. Yeah, so today we, we have a very exciting lineup of speakers. So Rod Donovan, who's a cloud uh, architect here at Velocia, will be talking specifically about streamlining lead management with uh, with Power Automate. So it's you know one example of how uh, Power Automate can address kind of a real life example of how you can improve the efficiency of an organization. And so Rod will go through that uh, example. We're also joined today and honored to be to have Ash Sharma from Microsoft. Um, he'll make a presentation on robotic process automation as you know one of the tools that is as part of the Power Platform that is highly uh, relevant and so he'll go through and do the feature presentation there. So thanks everybody very much for joining today. I think you'll find the uh, the topics to be you know highly uh, kind of relevant to your business and as you go through that journey uh, you know of adopting the Power Platform you know within your organization. So I'm going to hand it over to uh, Rod and so he can jump right into uh, you know his discussion around uh, streamlining lead management. Thanks, Rod. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Bill. And again, welcome uh, Ash to uh, joining us today. So I'm going to quickly talk about some of our uh, the things we can do with Power Platform when we're working within the system itself and ways that you can use the, um, the Power Automate itself. Right now, this uh, example that we're going to talk about is just for lead generation and how our sales team is working with the applications themselves and the things that we're doing. And a lot of it is just a simple, a quick fix or a quick, um, uh, a quick automation to make someone's life a little bit easier, gain that efficiency. If we can do, you know, save 30 minutes off of each salesperson's uh, time a week, you know, that adds up. So this example we're going to talk about here is going to be on the some slide. There we go. Um, some business card readers are getting your information. You know, there's multiple ways that you can get your leads into a, into the CRM system. You know, to, with this example we're going to talk about is just a business card reader. You're walking down the street, you're in line for coffee, getting your favorite espresso, and you grab someone's card, or you, you know, you're looking at the other cards on the boards. You don't longer have to take that card and then type all that information into the system itself. You know, the, the AI that's capable within the Power Automate that you can kind of reach into and say. Here's this application. I'm going to scan the business card while on my phone. It's going to fire off of this Microsoft Automate flow process, run through the steps, and then insert and create that record inside of your CRM system. So it's pretty, it's pretty neat along those lines that you can start doing those things. And this stuff is just available that you can use in your existing system. You know, and they even rolled out the uh, the latest version of Dynamic CE, the business card reader that's in there. You know, it's, it's coming built into the system. When we started this one up, it wasn't available yet, but we still use it. We still have a lot of sales folks that are out there and saying, all right, I just grabbed these cards at this particular event or, uh, um, you know, however you want to collect that information. You build up the process and start training the people. It's a fairly simple, you know, two clicks and you're done. Scan it and upload it. And the AI itself, can, you can see in this example here, we've got, you know, Aaron, one of the guys we work with, it knows his phone number, it knows his address. It can recognize that stuff from the system. So the AI is doing the hard part for you it fires it into the system and now you can actually have other events and other flows within the uh, CRM system that if it's a this type of business or if you classified it and you build in the process to say I'm at this event so everything I scan in today I want to classify as X Y or Z so you can modify these flows these don't even have to be hardcore and hard set for you know all of time each one you know, can design their own and we're trying to work with our sales folks uh, and get some of them that want to learn some of the tech of this is how you can go in and build your own so you don't have to come back to me, this low code, no code platform. Yes, I gotta make fun of salespeople here that even they can get it, you know, <laughs> uh, but working with them and say, all right, here's how you can build this up. Here's how I can do these things as well if it's sentiment analysis and you wanna point it at a Twitter feed, you know, these different things that are in the system, running these flows and these automates to then drive other events throughout the process. Here on this next example, um, We've got a you know account comparison app, and when we got a list from uh, partners at Microsoft saying here are some good leads, or wherever you, you're buying the list from Wine Spectator magazine, and you want to run those accounts in, 
there's a couple ways you can dump them right into the system or you can build up this process and we've got a flow that sits behind this account comparison that loads all the data up into an Azure data lake and then applies some fuzzy logic so that we can see for misspellings. It's not just doing a straight character read left to right of does something match or not. Putting that again, that AI using the system itself and the tools that are available to help us make those better decisions and again, to increase that efficiency with just this app alone um, for the sales folks that were uploading those documents or looking at those documents documents, there was 700 names and accounts that they had to compare, that would take them, you know, three minutes, they'd knock out four or five of them and do it a couple of times a day and try to get it all done by the end of the week. It was just, you know, numbing, mind-numbingly boring. Oh, this one doesn't hit or this one doesn't hit. Now they can load that stuff up and just do a quick comparison. Right, I know these people and if they're already in the system, then they can jump right into dynamics and say, all right, these are the open opportunities. This is who we're working with. So as I'm working with Ash and we're saying, comparing my list to his list, I can get to that information a lot quicker than before. So those are just some kind of uh, quick scenarios of things that uh, don't think that you have to make this automate. It's going to be this huge monster process that's going to solve all the business problems. That can happen, certainly. But as you start working with it and train some of your people, whether just in SharePoint or even Dynamics and some of your salespeople say, pick something that you're doing many times a day and let's put an automate behind that. Let's build up that process and start having that conversation because the more they're working with it, it gets addictive. Um, there's a lot more things that you can do with it and you get rid of that fear in the beginning of, all right, I'm too afraid of this. No, just go in and do something silly and goofy. Start working with it and that'll drive other initiatives within yourselves, within your team and your organization. Yeah, Rob, uh, what's interesting about it, your first example around sales and marketing people adding adding different names into the system, really that applies and take that concept and say, take a field service organization that you're out in the field with your customer and you're in meeting with different clients and as you are servicing them and you simply want to get more names into, into the system to enhance your you know, sort of your knowledge base around who you're interacting with. You know, it's another application, you know, of the, of the, uh, solution that you presented so uh, you know and you can even get it to, yep yeah it just, your example there throwing all of those images you don't even have to fire them into the system and do this business card scanner and this little app you can put them all into a sharepoint document library and then point to flow or point an automate at it and saying run through everything in that folder and put all this information in and categorize them a certain way i mean you can do these things in blocks as well never mind just you know one offs that you're standing in line talking to someone and training business cards you don't even have to take their business talk about the covid precautions you don't even have to handle the business card you can just take a picture of it now and you're good yeah. to go Exactly. Yeah. 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 Great example of business uh, cases, uh, you know, for the tools. And with that kind of a uh, highlight introduction, now we're going to get into Ash. Um, Ash, welcome. Uh, and we appreciate you coming here to talk about RPA and some of the great things that you can do with it. Yes. Thank you. Good to be here, Rod. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, someone may be a presenter and I will start sharing. Yes, sir. Screen. There you go. Thank you very much. So just to build on, so my name is Ash. I am a program manager on the Power Automate team, and uh, I look after our RPA efforts. And for those of you not familiar with RPA yet, I'll just go through uh, what RPA is uh, very briefly. Is there, uh, can you see my screen now? Yes, sir, I can. Okay, perfect, great. So in the for the automation space, I think uh, Rod just covered a couple of what we would call slightly adjacent types of automation markets. The first one is digital process automation. This is, I have APIs, I, I have systems that I want to go orchestrate and I just want to, to automate across those applications. It's called DPA. Uh, intelligent automation, being able to infuse AI as part of your automation process. So if I have the business card reader, for example, that I am just sending in business cards uh, images and it's extracting the data, or sending invoices, extracting the data, and having me automate uh, reading of that uh, document. Uh, that's intelligent automation. A lot of cases that we speak with customers, they want to do automation, but the types of applications they want to automate just don't have APIs. And this is where the field of RPA comes in, which is say, okay, if I don't have APIs, how do I orchestrate this thing? Well, the way you do it is by mimicking human behavior. So you could say, you know, how do I use the application? Well, I, I launch the application, I log in, I click a few buttons, I enter some values. And uh, that is essentially what the software, in this case a bot, would do, is to mimic that human behavior 
with dynamic data. So let's say the invoice or the business card reader, let's say I wanted to have that business card go into my legacy system because I'm, I, you know, I'm an old school guy and I have a, an application that just works fine for uh, tracking all my contacts. And from my Power App itself, I took a picture of it. It goes sent it out to AI Builder for it to extract data and then launches my application on my desktop or inside a VM somewhere. And it enters all the data in uh, by mimicking me as a as a person with new contact, enter information, and etc. So that's the field of RPA or robotic process automation. And really, Power Automate is a one platform that allows you to do all three of these capabilities. So, if I have over 400 connectors in Power Automate, I can call AI Builder and do text processing, vision uh, processing, document understanding, or I could go automate my uh, my uh, application as well that has no APIs. Hey, Ash, can we jump in real quick and uh, launch a poll to see how many people are already taking advantage of some of this? Yes, I'd love to. All right. Let me. Get... So, everybody, we just launched a poll to find out. Uh, let us know if your company's already leveraging RPA or some kind of intelligent automation, and we'll share that out with the group in just a few seconds. Ash, if you had to guess, how many people are not leveraging any kind of RPA or intelligent automation? I'm just curious. Uh, how many people are not? I would say probably majority are not. Okay. Okay. I'll bet you're absolutely right. But as you're going to find out in a second here, as I close the poll, we have got a pretty sharp group. Okay, yes. <laughs> I can't see the polls, yeah. I can't see the polls as well. Yeah, we've got a really sharp group. Actually, 30% of them uh, replied and said that, yes, they're using some kind of intelligent automation. Another 26 are working on it. So you've got 43% that replied that they, they haven't gone down that path yet. Got it. But half of everyone is, at least on the using it on the path. That's fantastic. That yes. is great. That is great. And that's really just speaks to how relevant it now is. It, it's away from this abstract academics doing uh, papers on uh, how my AI is better than your AI and really that mainstream uh, inclusion of uh, intelligent automation and pulling that into your uh, experiences that's that's awesome it's great to see and that was for intelligent automation right yes okay great wonderful all right well uh, Let's cover a so for so this section is going to talk about UI automation, which is robotic process automation. And the way uh, we've just released a tool called Power Automate Desktop. We released a preview of Power Automate Desktop at a at our Ignite conference a few weeks back. And really, what Power Automate Desktop allows you to do is it's a desktop experience that's an extension of the Power Automate service. So I I just like Power BI Desktop. Uh, similar to that, you can. You have, it's a desktop tool. I can build my automations directly in the desktop. So what you see is a picture of what the desktop would look like, and I'll go through a demo of this in the, in the next, right after this slide. Uh, but essentially, there's a notion of a script, there's a notion of variables, there's a notion of debugging, and I can automate a lot of different types of applications. So we have some customers automating SAP front ends using this. Uh, there's another one that's looking at Java application automations. A lot of people have locked down systems where you just can't install anything new on the applications and on the on the operating system. And what you have to do is connect to it through VMware or Citrix or some, some other experience to be able to go remote desktop to be able to launch applications. So all that is capable. Again, it goes back to the UI automation uh, capabilities. Now, there are a lot of exception handling that because a lot of things can go wrong. So exception ha handling is critical. And in fact, this automation can be run in either I'm sitting in front of the machine and I want to accelerate my automation. That's called attended automation. Or it's in a back office somewhere. My invoice system may be in a back office somewhere. Uh, and uh, it just the bot should just log on to the machine, launch the application, do its thing, and then log off and let me know how it went. And that's called unattended. So you could define uh, automation that runs in either one of those modes, and uh, this is available today. So that's the context of Power Automate Desktop, a new tool that is now in preview. And if uh, let's go through a demo of what that tool looks like, 
Uh, and let me play this one. And I'll, I'll walk through as it's playing, I'll walk through the experience for, uh, and we'll talk about, talk through the experience. Hang on. For some reason, PowerPoint is giving me an issue. Uh, so this, uh, you're already familiar with Power Automate. And today you can go to the Power Automate website <clears throat> and you can click on new to create UI flow. And this Power Automate desktop is a tool that you can use for creating UI automations or UI flows. And as soon as you do that, uh, there are a few options available. You'll see Power Automate desktop as the, uh, as the preview that's available. And we have a, a few other options as well for you to create. As soon as you create, the, as soon as you say, I want to create one, all you need to do is give it a name. And in case you don't have it installed already, There'll be a, you know, it won't launch. There'll be a, an option for you to go get the app. But in this case, I had it launched already. So Power Automate Desktop is going to start up. And what you see here is on the left-hand side, these are all the actions that, uh, that you can do. So control flow, like uh, conditions or loops. I can automate user interfaces. So this is click this button in this web application, uh, in the desktop, or web automation. Uh, or uh, terminal emulations, if I have text screen, a lot of insurance and manufacturing folks are still on uh, you know, 3270 AS400s and it, it's just, it's a meaningful and important part of their application uh, experience. And you can automate those as well. In addition to the UI automations, you can also, there are also API calls. So I want to send an email, for example, or I go want to launch a, a script, a Python script, all that is capable directly from within Power Automate Desktop. Now in this example, what we'll do is we'll just launch Edge. And uh, so you can drag and drop these actions from the actions panel onto the canvas and then specify properties for each one of them. So in this case, I just want to launch Edge and I'll give it a URL of what to launch to and uh, have some properties of uh, you know, what does it create as a variable, a browser that it creates. And I can operate on that variable. So within this Edge browser, I want you to click this link. I can also go ahead and launch a recorder. So instead of drag and drop, I can say, you know, just, just notice what I'm doing and record it uh, inside Edge in this case. Well, just very similar to what Office does in a macros. So uh, think of this as a cross desktop macro experience where as I start recording and I'm interacting with my, uh, with my browser, it's, it's recording all the actions that I'm doing. So in this case, it's a very simple list, very similar to one that uh, Rod showed, uh, which is just, I uh, have a, a list of customers and I just went through and recorded all those interactions with it. As soon as I'm done with the recording experience, this is the output of that recorder, right? So I could have created this by dragging and dropping manually as well, each action uh, meticulously and specifying it, or just as an acceleration, a jump started creation of this by by using the recording experience so uh, what i can do now is uh, let's just go through what this experience looks like uh, i have a uh, an, ex a, uh, an example here uh, this is one that we had created uh, earlier and this is one that essentially goes through each row in excel and it fills in that content in the website. And uh, as Rod was mentioning, you know, the, a lot of things that you do are just, just mind-numbing, uh, mind-numbingly boring. And you just want a robot to be bored instead of a person to be bored. Uh, so what you, what this one does is there's a there's Excel spreadsheet which has a bunch of rows in it. And what I want to do is go through for each row. I want to go in and populate my website. Uh, with this, so I don't have to do that manually. Now I can also, uh, this is a full-fledged experience. I can put debugging breakpoints. I can inspect those variables. I can uh, I can uh, go through one by one each step, run one step at a time. I also have the notion of subflows, so I can define. You know, it doesn't doesn't have to be this one big giant one. I can have subflows that uh, that I can uh, use. For, uh, for encapsulating some of my actions and then have just rich error handling I can specify for each one of those controls as well. The, one of the, uh, you know, for UI automation, even though I, I love it and uh, that's, my, uh, that's my passion, 
wherever possible, we ask people to do to use APIs as much as possible because UI automation is inherently fragile. Sometimes Windows comes up and says, hey, I have an update for you. Office comes up, let me help you. There's this new thing available. And uh, a bot that's not designed to handle that, it's just a very simple click this, click this, because I was told to do that. And uh, you end up, and sometimes the application is just not ready. It's uh, you know, the spinny comes up and your app may be designed for a human to sit in front of it. And maybe people are patient at times and uh, uh, the bot may not be expecting that. So the, the depth of uh, error handling that you need to put in and retry logic and fallback logic, uh, you need an automation experience that allows you to express all those different cases so that the bot can be more self-sufficient as long as possible. And that's what you can do in Power Automate Desktop. Hey, Ash, I got a quick question for you. Please. Well, we talked about the APIs uh, that you just mentioned and some of the, the monotony of doing some things. So if I had a uh, had to scan in a bunch of faxes that came in every night, you yep. can automate that process and then tie and daisy chain this one to some of the other APIs and, and start it kicking off here and then get into more advanced stuff. So you're not fully automating and doing all the uh, UI in the first part, you're just using that to get your data collection and then you jump into some of the more advanced techniques and options. That's absolutely right, that's brilliant. Yeah, actually that is the, uh, as, as you go through and you think of one automation platform that's able to span each, each one of these, so whether it's APIs, and you may be getting APIs through your fax service and putting them into SharePoint folder, for example, or uh, you get emails from Gmail. You can rely on the Power Automate service for doing that. And you can take those faxes and send it to AI Builder for it to extract all that data and then maybe uh, extract the content back, all still in Power Automate, uh, the service. And then once you extract that out, if you have to go uh, automate a UI experience, at that point, yes, this this desktop experience is what you would launch, and that would automate the desktop and then go back to the service. So Power Automate service remains the orchestration engine, and you can use these different tools in your toolbox for automating across these broad uh, uh, applications. That's fantastic. So, yeah, you can absolutely combine these. Yeah, great. Great, so here's the Excel file, and this is what uh, we have in, um, uh, that we just want to loop over and get fetch one row at a time. Excel is one of the most common applications that people want to automate. Uh, and the second one is SAP. It's just over and over, we keep hearing these uh, very frequently. So here it's, it's now running inside the debugger uh, and uh, it's just going through Excel. It's going to launch your browser and it's going to start filling in all the values in manually. In this case, I'm watching it. So this is attended automation. And sometimes in attended automation, I have, uh, a, the bot waits for me to say, okay, did, I did the work. Did you, did you approve of this work and do you want me to continue on? So sometimes it could be a back and forth. It doesn't have to be all the bot doing it. It could be the bot did something, waits for me, and then I let it go on as well. So you have flexibility there as well. On the right-hand side, you see the variables window and, uh, and all the debugging you could do. Now, when I save this script, part of the beauty of this uh, Power Automate desktop is it just saves that script directly into the Power Automate service. So everything you're used to with the service, all the solutions, all the environment, all the role-based access control, everything just, uh, this just participates in all that as well. So I could have one set of environment uh, that I've defined for my marketing team to take data from SharePoint and it's okay for you to put into Dropbox. But another one, the finance team can't do that. And I could specify the DLP policies directly in that environment that prevents the exfiltration of data as well. So this just participates in all that. So now I've saved this script. Uh, I have a script now a backup on the service. And in fact, Power Automate Desktop has a console experience as well. So this is, this is the console that I'm running on my desktop. I can launch, I can edit, I can delete scripts directly from my desktop. I can switch environments from my desktop experience as well. But now if we switch back to the browser, so here I am back in the browser now, and I can take a look at uh, the, uh, these are all the scripts that are stored back in the Power Automate service. And I can go ahead and create a new flow. So in this case, I'll create a new instant flow. And this is just a button, a simple button flow which is going to, and this is where you could use those 400 different connectors, but in this case, I'm just using a simple manual trigger, 
And instead of doing any fancy thing, all I'm going to do is just call the Power Automate desktop script we've just created. So uh, once I look for that connection, uh, I can find Power Automate desktop. And once I select that action, and this is how you could merge in, right? You could have the fax machine dropping in and I can now call my script. Uh, so I've just defined the script. I want to run it in attended or unattended. In this case, we're testing, so I just want to run it in, in an attended case. And that's it, that's all I needed to do. Uh, as I configured this, one of the other things that we would do is specify the gateway information, which is how the service is going to connect down to the machines, the resources where this is uh, this is running. It's the same gateway you're used to with Power BI, uh, with Power BI, or with Power Apps or Power Automate. This is this one bridge for the service to connect back to on-premises. And uh, and that's it. Uh, that's that's my very simple script. And I think in this demo, we could run it directly from there or outside here. And once we go ahead to continue, what you'll see is the application will launch on my desktop. Now, this is the cloud, right? I went through the browser and I'm manually I'm testing it. I'm running it. And it's now launching Excel on my desktop and then launch the browser on my desktop. And uh, it's now just, just executing all that. It's orchestrated from the uh, from the service. Ash, I've got a question for you while this is running here. If yeah. you were, um, if you had using the same example you used earlier, you're, you're running down the street to get a cup of coffee, um, and someone gets you the, you get the email saying, "Oh, Ash, I've just got that new list. You can load that in now." As you're out of the office, can you, you'll pull up your phone, and after you take the business card scan of the people you're standing in line with, obviously, uh, you can hit the button from your phone, and this will launch up on your desktop. Yes, absolutely right. In fact, I did something. What did I do? I had a, yeah, for provisioning, I had something, uh, an approval that I needed to do, which was on my desktop application. And I got the approval notification in Flow app on my phone. And literally as I was walking from upstairs to downstairs, I got the notification, I said approve. And I have a VM somewhere in Azure that's just set up for doing some approvals. And it just went and kicked it off, which just, you know, one step to the other. Side. I still remember which step I was on when I got this. I clicked a button, and by this time I reached the bottom of my stairs, I got a notification saying it was done. So absolutely, this is the magic of uh, the power of what is possible to do. And your uh, your example there, if you had to kind of haphazardly, oh, just a uh, VM out there running somewhere, but um, for our uh, customers and clients that we're working with, that having one of those VMs spun up just for these types of things, I didn't think about that until you just said it. Uh, there's a lot of capabilities that we can kind of build into it by just leveraging some of that stuff in the system itself. That's great. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Azure Labs, uh, yeah, I, it, there's so much technology already at just your fingertips uh, that uh, absolutely, you, you, if you're on a plane and you want to go automate something and you just you have some virtual machines, so absolutely. Uh, it is a, awesome. we're sitting on a lot of power, yeah. All right, so now with uh, the other advantage of having all the scripts, of course, stored in the Power Automate service is centralized logging and centralized auditing and centralized management as well. So what you can do for each one of these is go take a look at any history that you have from an execution perspective and it'll show you every step that it was executed, every input and output variable that that step took so that if you wanted to go back and uh, you know somebody asked you, hey, we got this invoice um, uh, last uh, last week and we approved it and uh, what was the data that went into that, you just, and that's the benefit of having Power Automate service log all that uh, inside CDS. So you have that centralized experience as well. So that was a very quick walkthrough of this tool called Power Automate Desktop which is in preview now. It allows you to build automation that runs on the desktop itself. Uh, you can, once you define that automation, you can save it as part of the Power Automate service, and it can then participate in the rest of your automation that you're doing. And as your systems modernize, because a lot of our customers say, you know, we, we just got an acquisition, uh, it's a T-Mobile just acquired Sprint, and there are a lot of legacy systems that are in uh, Sprint, and they just want, very quickly, they wanted to automate business processes that span those uh, organizations. So RPA is a great uh, glue to stitch them together while in parallel the IT systems are getting modernized, right? And they're getting uh, unified with whatever other systems already exist in T-Mobile. So as as they are uh, uh, as building modern system with APIs, 
what this allows you to do is incrementally move over. So as the application, my, my website now has a new uh, API instead of using it through the UI, that's awesome. I can then take out that part of desktop automation and start using the APIs instead. So it allows you to incrementally move and evolve your automation as your infrastructure evolves as well, which is just a very, uh, you don't have to stop and then restart and rebuild everything again. So that was a quick walkthrough of Power Automate Desktop. So for a few scenarios, just to make it, I covered a few scenarios as we were going through, but just to make it real. Uh, invoice processing is a great example that almost every customer has some notion of uh, customers and therefore some notion of invoices, uh, some, some notion of suppliers and invoices. So uh, invoice processing is a great example of one which is just mundane, tedious, uh, and you can, uh, you can bridge intelligent automation and say, if the intelligence says it's more than 90% probability, just let it go. Uh, if it's more than $50,000 or $5,000 of invoice, then let me know. Uh, otherwise, if it's less than that, just process it. Uh, so you can, you can just automate a lot of your scenarios there. Or for uh, onboarding, uh, there are a lot of people when uh, Microsoft is a big company as well, and when people join, there's so many systems that you need to go add their names into and give them permissions into, which uh, just used to be a manual, tedious tasks that we would have to go through, and many customers go do this. Or when they leave uh, the company, uh, and uh, you need to go take them out of these all these systems, which is just another pain, because it's just a spider web of all these different uh, applications they may be registered in. So that's another use case where you could think of from an HR perspective. Uh, and finally, one from the sales uh, team is uh, sales folks just day in and day out, they just have so many different, you have a spreadsheet here, a CRM system there, another customer management, my calendar here. You just so much time is spent on copying, pasting data and making sure this, uh, the, you're not introducing errors as, uh, uh, as you do that. And that's another scenario where you could look at RPA. It's just predictable, repetitive, it's just boring, and it is not adding in any human uh, value. So just offload that as much as possible. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Those, uh, yeah. Yeah, this is Eric. You know, I was talking with our VP of HR the other day as well. Of course, you know, you just had the the onboarding example, but but also with you know with in this environment, there's also offboarding, right? So as yeah. organization as folks leave the organization, kind of what happens there, and then in between the onboarding and the offboarding, how are your how is the relationship with clients and establishing kind of uh, and using. Uh, you know the tool Power Automate tool to collect information to aggregate that information about how how the organization is is doing right to get that feedback as well that's another kind of use case uh, as well we recently went through you know we're going through kind of an annual SWOT process our strengths weaknesses opportunities and threats as an organization and so mm -hmm. that type of you know a collection of information you know as well becomes a, a good use for the overall Power Platform and, and Automate kind of tools that's right and that's the key that's a great point uh, that's a key um, a point to highlight which is power automate automation is not an island it needs to fit into the rest of your system that you have built up it needs a uh, you need to have stages as your employees are going through their training processes or their uh, your clients relationships you need some place to store what state it's in and the, the status information you need experiences to be able to reason over them so power app uh, integrates with power automate power automate can save data in cds power app can read that data from cds power bi can have you can have dashboards and saying you know if this client uh, outreach we haven't reached back to them uh, for uh, 60 days and they're important customers just automatically sending a notification and uh, being able to have data-driven automation as well uh, is just part of the Power Platform. Or as some customers are going through and having new chat experiences, maybe the customers, maybe your clients yeah. uh, can have a new modality of interacting with you for more self-service uh, as well, for uh, whether it's Q&A or you know, knowledge base uh, questions they're coming up with. So which uh, behind the scenes of the chat experience, it could launch an automation as well. Maybe there's some escalation, some need for escalation, but the person to escalate to isn't available right now, and you need to go automate that thing uh, to automate the uh, the introduction into the customer ticketing system. So it's a great point, which is to look at holistically at what the Power Platform allows you to do, 
and all the intricate, it's individually excellent, but they're designed to work better together, these pieces of power, uh, of power platform. And that's very powerful um, mm -hmm. experience. Yeah, great point. The example that we use in our dashboard day app in the day classes are, it's a perpetual motion, I mean, machine. You turn the crank once and it just continues going and you're always adding to it. And you can even work in a little bit of uh, Rube Goldberg in the middle of it, just, just to make sure you can tie into all of these different systems. Yes, yeah, that's exactly right. All right, well, wonderful. So let me go through. Uh, so this was really the summary of uh, Power Automate capability. You saw a recording experience. There's a, a full-fledged debug uh, design time experience for you to be able to build automations which are quite rich. And you can launch them from the Power Automate service using the UI flows connector. And of course, the beauty of this is this is just one out of the 400 plus connectors that exist in Power Automate service. Uh, and uh, you can then mix and match it to your uh, to meet your needs. To get started, you can go download uh, this right away. It's available today. Uh, the simplest way to do it is when you create a new UI flow, it'll ask you know, step one, click new UI flow. Step two, select Power Automate Desktop. Step three, in the dialog that you get, just uh, click get the app and it'll help you uh, download this tool and uh, get you going. So I think that's uh, what's just one more summary slide of uh, really for Power Automate all up. Uh, it's just a, you know, this is, we've covered most of this. Uh, the thing I haven't covered here is natively integrated with Office 365. So whether you're in SharePoint and you see the automate uh, button on the ribbon or you are inside Excel with a flow uh, add-in or you inside Teams, um, to be able to go launch it from directly where people are, you can launch the automation on what you're working with. So, which is just very powerful in context uh, activation of automation, just very powerful concept. Similarly for Dynamics, if you are using Dynamics, then Power Automate is, of course, the, uh, the underlying fabric uh, for automation in Dynamics. And being able to launch, you know, again, RPA is just another one uh, that participates. It's like a Trojan horse, right? Once Once you get, Power Automate, all of those 400 connectors, including RPA, are now available to you directly in those experiences. Uh, and we talked about uh, intelligent automation and the uh, RPA itself. So uh, hopefully that gives you a good sense, yeah. With, with the uh, the different clients that you're working with, has anybody, has anybody impressed you or surprised you with what they're doing with the RPA? That you just uh, sit back going, wow, that's fantastic, or I never thought of that yet. Uh, you know, uh, one of the things that has been surprising to me is how, I'll choose the right word, how uh, traditional uh, many modern organizations are. Uh, in, uh, in the case, so I'll pick on ourselves, I'll pick on Microsoft. The, just a few years back, I think three years back, all the enterprise agreements, all the volume license agreements that Microsoft would get from our customers would be processed manually using this ad hoc mishmash of this, this Excel spreadsheet for this customer A that came in and we would have all these rules of if you accepted the um, if you accepted the order, you cannot approve the order, and somebody else has to come in. Well, that person was another column in the same Excel spreadsheet. That is just my gosh, the world runs on these ad hoc, uh, just uh, organically created uh, business processes, which is just an eye-opening experience to see how leading uh, technology uh, companies are just relying on these uh, mishmash of, uh, of homegrown systems, which are just barely working. And it, it was a scary at one point, but a, uh, just an eye-opening uh, experience uh, on the other side. So that, that's one. Uh, I think from a creative uh, one, uh, one of the ones I've seen recently is PowerPoint itself. When uh, I don't know how many people have de dealt with this, but inside PowerPoint, when you copy-paste across different um, presentations, then uh, when, you, when you paste it, it just brings over the slide masters into your new destination. And you end up with these hundreds sometimes, if you've done a lot of copying pasting between different applications, hundreds of just not used slide uh, masters, which is just, you know, your, your size of your uh, PowerPoint becomes 100 megabytes, 140 megabytes, and you want, hey, I only have 10 slides in this thing. Why, the, why is this such a big one? And a lot of that is because of these, uh, you know, these slide masters. So you go into master view, 
and you see all these just just these uh, scores of uh, master slides. So one of the automations I've seen is just right click delete, right click delete, loop over that a thousand times to, so that you, the users don't have to go sit there and do that. Uh, and that's one I've used uh, myself as well. I think that was the most creative one I've seen so far. That's pretty wild. Uh, yeah. We've one of our coders on behalf down. of the entire my, uh, marketing community worldwide. I thank you. <laughs> Uh, but those kind of things where you realize that you've got this capability built into your system with the same you're already licensed for you well in some cases it was, you still need to be licensed for it but it's a the, the technologies that are here one of our guys Alan on our team was doing repetitive tests and just going back in and running these things as we were preparing to do some of these RPA in a day classes he's like I just learned how to do this so I'm going to create this task because I'm tired of doing it. I only have to do it 10 times, but it takes me 15 minutes. So just going through that process all right now, I'm used to doing this. And now when I want to create more of them, I think he's got six or seven of them now lined up that for different projects that he's working on to do some of those same repetitive things. Of, if I only have to do, if I have to do this more than once, is there a way I can automate those? And you start building up that library and that uh, the confidence of building, you know, using the technology that you've got. That's right. Yeah. And I think as, the thing I notice in myself is my tolerance for repetitive, mundane, it's just going down. It's just, hey, I don't have to do that. It's just my recognition, my awareness of how much time I spent just wasting uh, on these things that I do on a day-to-day -day basis. It's just, I'm, I'm now more aware. And you're absolutely right. There has to be some threshold uh, for you to be able to invest in it. It takes you now 15 minutes, but you would save 10 minutes later on. But for me, that threshold is now continuing to go down and just say, you know, wait, what? I just ha uh, I have a, now a whole library of different automations that I use for just tedious things that I'm going through. And that's one of the other side effect of, uh, you know, we, we talk about the, the really the, the strategy, this the value of uh, Power Automate is to allow people to focus on more important things and so that the systems can take care of the mundane. And I'm actually going through as a person, I'm realizing that for myself of how I've become more effective by using these automations and just having a library of these accelerations that I could kick off and go do something else and come back. Uh, so that is absolutely true. I think that's a, there's a maturity uh, curve that I'm starting to see emerge from our users as well that are now just getting more aware, less tolerant, and just more uh, are now incented to go invest in building such automations for their own sake. I, I like that term, accelerations. Yes, sir. <laughs> we, have to, we have to work hey, that Rod, in the lexicon. Rod and Ash, we, we, we need to jump forward a little bit here. Um, we have a ton of questions for Q&A, so I want to make sure we, we have a chance to jump forward. Thank um, you, Mayor. Sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, and you don't, you're not finished, Ash. There's a bunch of questions in here for you, so we're gonna come back to you. Um, I do want to, obviously I'm sold on this concept uh, based on the PowerPoint example alone, but I do want to launch a quick poll and ask the audience, you know, after today's presentation, um, are you more confident that RPA could play a role in your organization, uh, maybe than you were when you, when you started today? So if you guys could just jump in and give us a few responses. We're up to about 60%, 70%, and uh, we'll go ahead and close this out. Okay, you know what? Uh, very thrilling results. I know you can't see the screen, Ash, but 95% uh, of the people said that they're, they're more confident. Post yeah, absolutely, it is. Power in your hands, it is. <laughs> time, save your time, yes. We should have a bottle. That is great stuff. Okay, uh, Eric, I think it's it's over to you for a moment, right? Yeah, yeah thanks very much. And thanks, Ash, for uh, doing the presentation. And I'm absolutely thrilled that 95% can see a, uh, a use case, you know, for um, for uh, robotic process automation. Um, you know, from a Velocio perspective, I think that what we are looking at, and I think it's reflected in the presentation today, is how do we save you time? You know, time is the one commodity that you simply cannot get back uh, you know, in your day-to-day. -day. And so if we can improve, you know, your time, time efficiency, the impact that you have on the organization, um, accuracy and data, data flow, it all results in increased productivity. So 
when we look at it, we're looking at you know the integration of all of the technologies as we serve our over 4,000 clients across a broad range of industries. And what's interesting is that uh, you know Power Platform can serve as a total horizontal play uh, for every single industry that's out there. So um, you know we look forward to engaging with folks uh, in that regard. Next slide. So yeah, uh, in terms of you know what we do and how we can play, uh, you know the team has a series of uh, packaged offerings around. Uh, around the entire power platform, those go really from the start of what you were all engaged in, which was the uh, you know app in a day uh, event. Some of you were in the dashboard in a day event. We follow that on with various types of offerings, you know, for, to bring you up from that base 100 level up to a 200 level and 300 level, so that way you can go ahead and deliver solutions for your organization. The part that we play along the way is really to uh, go go ahead and um, uh, you know, advise you in this effort. So uh, that's basically what uh, what Velocio is is doing um, in that regard as well. We uh, take a look at you know all of the data data flow within your organization. So any place we can increase efficiency, we try to across yep. the board. Exactly. And a quick plug that if uh, as Bill mentioned earlier to join the App of the Day alumni, here's the link again um, for those uh, folks. And uh, this next slide here to uh, Make sure that you're, if, you have, if you've been to one event, go to the other event as well. Uh, we'll be doing a uh, RPA today here by the end of the year. We're in the process now of scheduling that out and get, getting everyone uh, tuned into that stuff. So we'll put some uh, messages out here on the LinkedIn uh, message board as well. And now we're getting into the question and answers. This is my favorite part of the event because I get to speak. <laughs> Just kidding. I love the questions. We have a, we have a lot of questions. Um, I want to start with a couple of simple ones. Um, very first question we got is, you know, will we talk about licensing? And then there's another question that's two more that say, I haven't seen the automate desktop before, you know, is it available to general users? So I guess you can kind of mix those together around availability and how people would get rolling. Yes, absolutely. So Power Automate Desktop, you're absolutely right. It is new. Uh, we launched it for a public preview in September, on September 22nd, we launched it. So not so just over a month or a month ago. Yeah, that's right. Just very, very recently. Uh, a lot of it came from the acquisition we did in May of a company called Soft Motor, uh, which you may have heard of, uh, but essentially it's now available and you can go download it. Uh, from a licensing perspective, uh, this is for RPA. Really, it's uh, depending on whether you're doing attended or unattended, the different license uh, available for those. For attended automation, there's also a trial available, so you can go get started on UI Flow's attended RPA uh, trial, and that's uh, the quickest way to go do it. You can do it right away. Awesome, awesome. So here's another question. Do, does Microsoft Power Platform uh, RPA work along with other RPA tools? Uh, I think they said like PEGA or others, or is it just a direct competitor to these other tools? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, the great question. So we can, uh, in Power Automate itself, uh, you can define uh, connectors, as you know, and there are over 400 different connectors. And we're working with many of the RPA vendors uh, to be able to go launch their automations. Because you know, it, it, come one, come all. We, there's no There's enough. Uh, in, there's enough opportunity for the world to optimize their business processes that. We just, uh, if you've already invested in a, uh, a PEGA or something else, awesome, great. We just want you to uh, benefit from both uh, technologies. So what we are working with each of those vendors is to see how they can create connectors. And usually a lot of these systems, just like Power Automate, usually they have a, an API surface area that you can use for launching automations. And once you know what that API surface is, then from one, you can call the other. So part of the, you know, you probably two hours of googling and you'll know you know what what thing to call uh, and <laughs> if you if you have the benefits if you if you like the uh, the the depth of pega and you like the breadth of uh, power automate or the integration with microsoft 365 or dynamics 365 and you want want to wire them up together awesome great uh, just after two hours you should be able to find out how to go do that and worst case now you could still use the ui to build out the macro of opening up that particular application and firing those events 
Yeah, you could you can absolutely do that. It's uh, whatever API is possible. Please invest in this two hours <laughs> to save yourself some time sure. of, uh, from a resilient from a debugging perspective uh, later on. Because things uh, can be fragile with your automation. But yeah, absolutely. As a fallback, uh, RPA is the ultimate connector. When you don't have anything else, you can always fall back on RPA. But what a, what a what a great segue talking about ultimate connectors. So this question is: Can our uh, can an RPA process call an IRS website, fetch a return due date for a specific state uh, and tax return type, and load it into your system? I haven't tried that myself, but I don't see any reason. Uh, yeah, very likely that should be able to do. And usually for automating uh, browsers, there is uh, the browsers usually have a some kind of a DOM, some kind of a representation of the web page, which is what the recorder then aligns to and say, okay, great, these are what the buttons look like. You can always fall back on image processing. So a lot of times, especially when you're working with remote systems or you know just black box websites uh, that don't exp expose a lot of their internals, uh, you can then come at it from an image base, look for this image and then click this button or uh, you know, enter the text at this offset uh, from this text. So there are a few different techniques that you could use for automating websites as well, but that should be possible. Um, have any of the uh, states called you up to help with their voting, their uh, counting ballots? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but Microsoft is not home today. <laughs> That's a tough one. Great. Hey, uh, here's another question. Can uh, This comes from James. Can RPA initiate a shell execution on a remote Linux server? Ooh, uh, that's a good one. I haven't tried it myself. I believe there's an SSH um, connector to go do that. That's a good one. There is PowerShell. You can launch PowerShell from here. Uh, it's been a few years since I worked with uh, scripts and Linux. So I'm not sure. As long as there is a way from Windows, if you're able to call into your Linux system, it should be possible. But that's a that's a good question. I love all these use case questions. You know, people are people are going, "Wow, this could this could make a difference." For me. Yeah, we're moving off of theory into practicality, which is great. Yes. Well, well here's one. I'm, I'm not sure I understand this, but uh, Richard asks, uh, "Do all of these solutions require CMS, or can we use a different backend?" I'm not CMS. sure. I, I think you meant CDS. Uh, maybe uh, you meant CDS. So, if if so. Then, uh, yeah, CDS is the centralized storage where we store the script and we store the logs. And the reason we do that is because of all the benefits of, that come along with CDS of uh, role-based access control, of uh, backup restore, of uh, just uh, isolation uh, across environments. And, uh, and you can do, uh, you know, CDS itself raises events as well. So, you know, whenever the automation was kicked off. If you want to do something else in response to that event, you can you can wire up a lot of the system together. You can uh, expose CDS entities in Power Apps. So there's just a lot of benefits of instead of creating a separate storage uh, for our logs and uh, scripts, we just align to CDS as that. So yes, UI flows require CDS. Great. But you don't. You can, uh, as Ash is talking about, you don't have to you build all your other applications at all and use that as your data storage or anything. It's just going to have the mechanics and the management behind it. So you're, you know, you can't get away from it. But you don't have to build any new stuff into it if you've got a couple of local SQL servers or an access database and things like that that you want to still work with. Uh, you just kind of let it do its thing in the background, and you don't really have to worry about CDS in and of itself. That's a great point. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, that's right. exactly right, Rod. So in the scenario that I went through from Excel to website. There is no data getting into CDS. Uh, I don't have to yank it out of Excel, push it into CDS, then read from CDS and put it into the website. No, right. the only thing in CDS is for our own operational purposes, we're storing our logs there so that we can make it easier for you to see the data. Absolutely right. Great point. So here's one for you. Does RPA play a role in minimizing compliance, uh, I guess regulatory compliance risk? Yes, yeah, absolutely. There is an airport uh, not to be named in Europe. I was speaking uh, with them uh, a few months back. And uh, what they were, have, so they have a process where uh, there's so many stories in this. Uh, this uh, <laughs> very quickly, there's a process where uh, they have a lot of employees and that airport grew a lot. And uh, they now have a lot of compliant training that they need, uh, uh, training that they need to do. So everyone that works at the airport needs to go and make sure they are trained up. 
And the system that, uh, that tracks this information about, have you taken the training? Are you in compliance or are you out of compliance? From a training perspective, was an old legacy system that was built at a time when the airport was a lot smaller. So what they had to do, anytime they would enter a person's uh, information, it would take them, literally it would take them between seven to 10 minutes to generate a report per person. And there was a team of four people whose main job it was to generate these reports for people to find out if they're in compliance or not. And what, what would you have to do? I mean, there's only so many coffee breaks that you can take. So you would then put, you write their names on sticky notes, you put them in Excel spreadsheets and say, yeah, I'll get back to it whenever I get around to it, because it's just so hard for you to, uh, to go, get through the system because of the bottlenecks. Um, so their use of RP is straightforward, which is instead of having a human weight, have a bot weight, and their estimation was 500,000 euros is what they were going to save by this simple bot because they, the people could be doing other things and from a compliant mitigation, uh, from a risk mitigation perspective, they were able to avoid a whole bunch of different uh, uh, you know, lawyer discussions uh, that they would rather not do. So absolutely right, just having the data flow through digitally into your process uh, instead of ad hoc separations in Excel spreadsheets or in other sticky notes, uh, it's just absolutely inherently more compliant. And that's um, one of those examples that you talked about. We've been talking about, you know, taking in these invoices. That's an ongoing thing. I can see a company having that still the issue a year from now. We're building this app up. But if you've got something like a legacy system, you could build a bot to do some of that work and transfer some of that data into the new system for you if there's another, not another way to do it. So you're building up a bot to do one task and then you're just destroying that at the end of it because it's done with it. It might only be up from running for a month, spin it up, have it do its repetitive task, and then you're done because you're moving on to other things. I was, I've been thinking that more ongoing, but even just historically of creating a bot to do something that I don't want to do for a month, that's fantastic. Yeah. There you go, a month back. So we, we have three minutes left. Um, Rod, if you could flip us to the last screen. Um, yes, sir. And we'll just let everybody kind of digest that while we're talking. But I wanted to give each of you an opportunity um, to, to our audience. You know, everybody's sitting on the edge of their seat. They're waiting to hang up so they can go get started with RPA, right? <laughs> so whether it's, uh, whether it's a place to go find information or a next step to take, can each of you kind of in turn, just a brief, mm -hmm. give them some advice. What's the next thing they should do if this has, if they think this has value for their company? Mm -hmm. I'll uh, go with, keep an eye on the events page for our ARP in the a, RPA in a day class that we'll be having, you know, uh, as quick as we can get it up there um, and then get in and start playing with it. I've used this example before many times that uh, how much you learn from ages zero to six, just playing, get in there and play with the systems. These are evolutionary tool sets. These are forgiving systems. It's pretty hard to eat your system, you know, intentionally. Uh, but get in there and start playing with it just even to do something simple uh, create a flow to say happy birthday to everyone on your facebook because you don't you know want to save that five minutes every morning of typing in happy birthday and cutting and pasting that to everyone on facebook you can do those kind of things and build these you know processes out yeah i, I would say that uh, you know once you've gone ahead and done that rod and you sort of have a little bit of uh, comfort and familiarity with the tool and you know how easy it is to actually engage with your business uh, you know, compatriots and, and collaborate within your organization about how the technology can be employed. Because ultimately, if you go ahead and, and uh, deploy these types of solutions, you'll end up sort of building your own, you know, professional reputation within the organization and helping the organization succeed. So I think, you know, looking for those business cases, you know, for your organization is really helpful. And uh, I would just say that, you know, there's a lot of information that's out actually on YouTube. You can find Ash out there doing a couple of different presentations as well. You can, so you can see him again. And I think that would really help as well to kind of bridge that gap from a technology to a business use case. Yeah, and then just building on that, just have a low tolerance for crap, uh, if I could say that. I don't know. <laughs> you can. For tedious tasks. And uh, just, just raise your antennas. Be, be more aware of where you're spending time. And and uh, just just be more uh, respectful of your own time. Just, that's something that I do for myself uh, repeatedly. It's just so easy for us to fall into the old habits and for us to then just say, you know, no, it's, I, I just say, no, I, I don't want to do this anymore repetitively. I just want to <laughs> invest in having maybe half an hour, I just build this thing, uh, which is going to save me two minutes at a time, but for, for virtually. Uh, and, uh, and as a result of doing that, I'm building skill, I'm building, just a, a new muscle that I haven't had before, 
So just just lower your tolerance as well uh, as much as possible, and just see where what that opens up. That's great advice. Yeah. Phenomenal presentation today, guys. Ash, we 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 all want to thank you for thank you, sir, uh, for taking some time out. Thank you. Yep. Thank you very and much. To, thank you for joining. Thank you very much. And to everybody out there in attendee land, thank you for joining us once again. Uh, we will have a November event, but uh, we have not picked the date yet. We're trying to work around some uh, some conferences and other things going on. Um, you will also receive a survey in the next week. Uh, we're going to send you just a collection of topics that we're considering for the next few months. And uh, if you wouldn't mind, just kind of jumping into that survey and giving us an idea of the topics you'd like us to focus on, and we'll do that. Oh, and Bill, if I could uh, quickly plug for everyone, the excuse me, if you want to show off any of the Power Platform projects that you've done, like we've had some yeah. presenters in the past from the field itself, just let us know. Uh, more than happy to uh, get you guys out there and uh, showing off, you know, the things, the cool things you're doing with the systems. Yes, for sure. Um, okay, with that, that will conclude today's event, and we'll see you all back in November. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great afternoon. Thank you, Ash. Thank you. Thank you.